Hey Gordon, I just got a new toy and I need to get a memory card for it. What's the best way to find out how to get a memory card? Okay, first you have to have a seat. I'm gonna to explain to you okay, I got it. what you need to know. There's only four things, pay attention. The first one I'm gonna get into is the most confusing part. Oh, great. A lot of people think all memory cards are the same. Buy the cheapest one for the lowest price. I'm done. Yeah, why not? It very much depends on what you're using it for, the device you're using it for. Okay, well, let's start off with video. I, you know, this awesome DJI Osmo Pocket, or, you know, what, what kind of things do I need to be looking for with that? So for video, there are three ways they explain it. All of them are confusing. The one you're from, most familiar with is the class. Yeah, class the, two, class four, C. class got, six, class 10, right? Yeah, it's got the little C with it's the It's got the little C it. on yeah. there. It's got the little C with a 10. Uh, that means writes 10 megabytes a second, uninterrupted for video. Okay. Doesn't stop, because if you stop, you break that video stream, it just stops, yeah, right? Definitely. So that coexists C2 through 10 with U1 and U3. Okay. And also V2. V4, V6, V10, V30, and now V90 as well. Okay, wait, so, so which one am I focusing on? So all of those pertain to video, and what's crazy is they all, all of the memory cards, because you're afraid you may not buy it if it doesn't have that little thing on there, they may have all of them on there. First, read the manual. If you're, whatever your manual tells you to buy, just get that. That's the easiest way not to get messed up. Okay. That's the easiest way, okay? Right? But if you don't know that, you basically, class 10 works for 1080p video, 30 frames a second. Generally class 10 for 4K 30 and lower is good. If you're going higher than that, then you're gonna want a V30, V60. You have a 8K drone or a drone that's doing surround video and also or recording multiple video streams and also GPS data, you're gonna want the highest performance card, V90 probably, whatever they recommend, generally, 8K and up is V60, V90 range. Okay. And then if you're doing multiple streams or GPS data, V90. So why not just get the highest speed, you know, and say, hey, the, the, I know I'm going to be in good hands, right? Well, the first one is you're overpaying because V90 cards are not cheap oh. because it is meant for a drone, 8K drone with all these kind of cool things. You're using it in this GoPro 3 from five or six years ago. It's a total waste of money. Oh. It may not have been formatted it correctly because it's too large. Uh, I generally recommend for very old hardware, go with class 10. Class 10 is a safe place to go. Okay. One thing I think people need to know because it confused me, it confused a lot of people is, again, you'll look at the packaging, it'll say class 10 and V30. And you go like, why does it say V30 and class 10? If V30 is 30 megs a second and class 10 is 10 megs a second, isn't that good enough? And this is where it gets confusing. They just want to have class 10 on there because they don't want to not sell you this memory card. Huh. So V30 means pretty much it's gonna be good for 30 megs a second writes. Okay. And, and that, that is for video. That's for video, that's for, for video. video. So, okay, well what about photos, photography? So you know. for photography, it's different. You generally wanna buy a memory card where they brag about it. If they brag about their write speed. This memory card says 90 megabytes a second. This Lexar professional card says 1000 X. Yeah. So they're basically saying we can hit a minimum write speed and in an SLR, a DSLR, that makes a difference. So V30 doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna write the fastest. And it's funny, you can get memory cards that will write at you know 90 megabytes a second and they'll, they won't be V30 rated or V, V90 rated. Hmm, okay. So, cause it's really only for still camera where when you take pictures, it fills up that buffer, it pauses, it's not a problem. Yeah. Video cameras, you can never stop. So it's not a problem. Generally, go for explicit write speed on, on, the, on the packaging. It's the way to go. For okay. high performance SLRs, one caveat, a lot of these things are gonna really disappoint you. This Sony camera, it's somewhat older. This thing uses USB 2. It doesn't write faster than 35 megabytes a second. So if you buy a card that writes at 90 megabytes a second, you're basically throwing away all that performance you paid for. So you need to read the manual. They won't tell you that in the manual. What? Because they, you'll have, you may have to see some reviews out there. I think generally the the rule is if it's older, you know, uh, you don't want to pay for the newest thing. It's just not gonna. So if it's a brand new 2019 camera, 
by all means, newest memory card probably gonna get you the best performance. Okay. If it's three or four years old, you could probably step back two, three steps and it won't make any difference. USB 2, 35 megabytes a second. Okay. They just put a ton of memory in here to buffer it out, so it didn't matter. Great. Okay, well what about phones? I just got this new phone and I wanna expand the uh, the capabilities. I got the cheapest option, so the, the less internal storage, so I can just expand it later. Right, so there's a new specification for Android for writing, it's, it's, it's IOPS. It's not about writing video constantly or writing a lot of data at the same time. It's about randomly jumping around that memory card, reading and writing. So A1 means greater IOPS. Uh, it can write and read more random read and writes. Okay. A2, even more, sounds yeah. great, right? Yeah, right. Sounds great, except the testing that I've done in Android phones, I used an LG V40. It didn't really make that much of a difference in random reads, random writes. Hmm. Uh, even though this is an A2 card, it should have blown away the little crappy micro SD cards I had. Yeah. And looking into it, it's because the Qualcomm 845 Snapdragon, which is still used in some top of the line phones, doesn't even support A2. Right? So if you have, you got, you buy a brand new A2 memory card, you paid all this money for it, you may not need to see a very significant increase in random read, random write performance. Oh. What's even worse is they don't even support A1 yet. Most of them are supporting standards from six years ago. Oh. So even if you bought an A1 card, you're not gonna see the full potential and you do apparently have to have it supported in the controller and the firmware to support A2 and A1. It may not make that much of a difference. It can be somewhat faster because the cards generally are gonna be better performance at random reads, random writes. Okay. But it's surprising to see brand new phones not support A1 and A2. Wait, so should I pay the $100 to upgrade the internal memory or pay the $100 to get a card? Do the internal memory, that's faster. I know that's gonna really hurt paying your, your carrier that money, but oh. if there's a 64 gig or 128 gig or 512 gig, that's gonna get you the most performance. Because well, I know everybody okay. goes, I'll do a 32 gig phone and buy a 512 gig Memory yeah, card right? is cheap. Yeah. Performance is gonna suck. Uh, you're gonna be disappointed. Dang it. If you're storing videos to watch, uh, just to, you're burning your videos, your pictures, generally okay. But as far as storing your applications on there, it's gonna really disappoint you. So pony up to put the memory in the phone. Okay, well, so uh, in my car, I've got a, a new dash cam that I just installed and I need to get a card for it. Uh, what, what number am I looking at this time? Yeah, so that is the worst thing. So if you're doing a memory card for your dash camera or surveillance camera at home, okay. or C10, V30, your A1, your A2, your explicit rights, don't, may not matter as much. Sure, certainly you're gonna to wanna to hit your class 10 because if you're doing 4K surveillance camera. Yeah, right. But the other thing you're probably gonna to wanna to pay attention to on memory cards is this thing, it's called the high endurance. It's not really a rating, but they have these, they're called heavy duty or high endurance cards. Hmm. And what it is is the kind of memory that they use in the card or firmware that is tweaked for longer life. Remember, these memory cards, you put them in your phone, you put them in your recorder, you're not gonna really use them that much. You might record a, an hour, two hours, five hours a week, that's a heavy user. Yeah. You put that in your surveillance camera, it's running 24 seven, 12 months a year. I've done that, I've had them, they just stop working after six months, eight months. Basically the memory cards, you know, they're, they're TLC, they're high capacity, they're really cheap cards. They basically give up the ghost after a year, less mm. than a year, okay. and they don't tell you. Okay. I have had some that work fine, but it's kind of a draw. You don't really know what these are gonna do. Are gonna do. A lot of the high endurance memory cards will actually tell you how many hours they will last. Oh, wow. The larger the card, the more hours, huh. and also they say 5,000 hours, 10,000 hours. Interesting. These don't mention it. They don't mention it anywhere in the packaging no. because that's not really something you're worried about with these. You're not gonna do 10,000 of hours in a GoPro <laughs> or one of the, you're just, it's just not gonna happen. A okay. surveillance cam or dash cam, very, very important spec to pay attention to. All right, uh, my last question is, why is this so damn complicated, Gordon? Well, it's so important, it's so complicated because you would think they would just put V30 on here. V30 yeah. would mean, hey, it works with U3, it works with class 10. But what the card makers are afraid of is you go to the store and you want to see class 10. My manual says, Gordon says, yeah. I want class 10. So they put everything on there. They haven't really figured out a good way to communicate. It's all backwards compatible. 
right? Because it mm. should be all backwards compatible. That's the great thing about memory cards. They're generally backwards compatible. Not always the case, but generally they are backwards compatible, but they can't do that. They, wanna, they don't want to risk losing a sale because if they don't have it on there, people aren't gonna buy it. So that you look at these memory cards, you see a U3, you see a class 10, which doesn't make any sense because a U3 card writes at 30 megabytes a second, class 10 writes at 10 megabytes a second for video as well. Why do that? But if you don't have it, you may not buy it. Oh, so it. it's sort of done in order to help you understand it, but it also confuses you too because there's so many things on here, you don't know what it means. All right, I'm gonna have to go back and watch this video a couple times to hopefully try to understand it. Yes. Uh, and hopefully you will understand it as well. Uh, I wanna hear if you had it, have any uh, horror stories in the comments below of buying a card and realizing that it didn't work great. I'm sure it happens to all of us. Oh yes, yeah. yes, it's very confusing, but hopefully that helps you a little bit. Yeah, and thank you for doing all the testing. I, I really appreciate it. If you want more information on it, you've got a great article over at yes. pcworld.com. We will link down in the description below. All right, well thank you for doing all this testing, Gordon. I really appreciate it, and we will see you later.